All right, hey, look, I am back to doing voiceovers. Uh, today is going to be my first recording of time-lapse development, and I'm going to voice over it, and we'll see how things go. I think it's going to go well. So I wanted to jump right into the refactor. Now that I have Reactive Core working, the first thing I wanted to do was go back over the maze generation algorithm and make sure that I have a centralized function that generates essentially rings around a center point which would be the very corner of the maze right next to the spawn area the first rings that i try to address are the outer bounds so the walls that form the outsides when you first spawn in it's the left and right side so the walls within the maze as well as the walls on the sides of the spawn area so i start with the initial algorithm that i use to generate the bounds on the outside. What I want to do is make that a little more generic. And I started first by making a function that generated just the back walls, the far walls. And then I adapted that so I could not only generate the front boundaries, but also the back boundaries. So I'm using front left, front right, back left, and back right. What you're seeing right now is that I have to create a new filtered operator. And the reason that I need this is I noticed when generating the back left and the back right walls, there would be an extra wall on the outside of the maze. And I wanted to get rid of those. So to do that, I created a filter operator for RX core, for reactive core. So that way I could filter out those cells in particular. With those three cells filtered out kind of manually at this point, I move on to the next step. I check in my code. And now what I want to do is start adding in the ability to only generate the front or the back part of the ring. The reason I need this is because when I start generating the starting area, the starting area isn't a full ring. It's only the back of a ring because the rest of the maze is the main maze, but I'm gonna generate that separately. At this point, I'm realizing that my filtering system isn't going to work. If I get a back or a front, I should be able to filter down to those allowed directions. So I use an intersection between the allowed directions and what I want to include. So when I pass in back, I get both back left and back right. And thanks to Stack Overflow, I found a good intersection algorithm. I adjusted it for my needs. And of course I copied the link so I can comment it and you know share the credit when I need to, always do that. And now I have a new starting area system using my new ring generation. So I check in the code and we move forward. The next part of the system that I need to generate is the main maze. The main maze is a square that is made up of multiple rings. So if I give it a ring size, it should generate a ring for every part of the maze. I quickly realized that trying to generate every part of the maze at the same time, including columns and floors and the walls, ends up being a problem. So I update my log operator so it can print tables so I can get some more information into what's happening. So like any large task, I need to break this down. So instead I switch out the main maze logic and I break it up into a main maze floor and then the rest of the main maze. So that way I can break this down into something easier. Some background on core, since I have the main maze cell generation happening in an observable, whenever we generate walls, floors, and columns separately, all three of them are calculating those main cells by themselves. So it gets calculated three times for each part of the maze. And instead I wanna share that but I look into Rx and see what it takes to create a share operator. It's too much, so instead I work on something else. So what you're seeing right now is me generating a new operator for Reactive Core called Distinct. With Distinct, if the same object comes through twice, it only comes through once. It will dedupe any values that come through. Since I'm not working with raw values like numbers or strings, I'm working with tables, I needed to add a key selector function. So I do that so I can generate a quote unquote key for each cell made up of their X and Y. So that way the distinct operator knows what's a duplicate and what's not a duplicate. Once I have that, I actually create a custom operator here that I can use in say the wall and the floor and the column generation of just remove duplicate cells. And then I update the algorithm to generate the key 
so that way it can also include the rotation if I need it to include the rotation. Now that I'm no longer duplicating columns, walls, and floors in the same places, I go back and I want to address some of the like hacky logic that I had for filtering out manual cells. So I generate the two parts of the wall bound separately. I generate the back ring with a different parameter than the front ring. And then once I have the front ring, I realize that I have to figure out what the far cell is so I can remove that. At this point, I'm generating the maze over and over again, finding a couple bugs here and there, and I squash those. And then after that, I take a look at the code and I browse around, try to figure out what I want to do for the next set of sessions when I'm updating the prototype. Honestly, I think the voiceover went well. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll try to improve this process over time. I really enjoyed doing this and watching myself code at 32 times speed was a lot of fun. So I will be doing this more and I'm excited to improve the process and get better at this. I will see you tomorrow.